Hello and welcome to another sorting session. How about that? How about that? But you didn't expect that shit to happen. So I keep saying that uh, this is going to be the last episode of Mini Cell, but I cannot bring myself to actually finish it on that note. So uh, today we're going to do a fourth episode of um, Mini Excel series, hopefully the last one. So the only thing that is left is uh, implementing uh, all the necessary arithmetic operations. And once we have that, I'm going to be happy with the current solution. I just like don't want to leave it unfinished. Right. So we have um, everything we need. We have the expression evaluation, the like dependency between the cells, the cell cloning, the error reporting. The only thing we miss for this thing to be more or less useful, even though it's not supposed to be useful. Uh, if you think this uh, thing should be useful, you're missing the point. Um, um, so the only thing that is missing is uh, more arithmetic operations. So right now we have only a single arithmetic operation, which is plus just to test things out. Uh, so I want to add uh, minus multiplication, division, and and probably some sort of function calls and some uh, built-in functions that, you know, help with uh, sort of like computations and stuff like that, that you usually do within Excel, right? So you can find the source code of this entire thing in, uh, in the chat if you're watching it live or in the description if you're watching it uh, on YouTube. So, and we spent the whole previous episode um, implementing a proper error reporting i think it's not uh it's not published yet but uh we're gonna have a previous episode uh this thing is to be done and let's take a look at the current progress of the mini cell um mini cell project so we have uh some stuff in here this is irrelevant uh let me finish the latest things let me finish the latest things so the latest things have been uh, uh, successfully fetched. Let's merge them. And I'm going to try to run this entire stuff. There we go. So everything uh, was recompiled successfully. So uh, right now we're testing on which file? We're testing on the stress copy. Okay, so stress copy uh, basically has a big table that clones uh, three arithmetic expressions, right? And it closes the, clones them all the way through, right? So it just basically stress, stress tests the, uh, the clone functionality. And if I try to run this entire thing, everything is working correctly. So, and if you introduce any sort of mistakes in here, for example, if you replace this thing with A, which is not correct character to describe a direction uh, from which you're cloning the characters, it will tell you uh, A is not the correct direction to clone the cell from. And look at that, it actually generated precise position within the file where this kind of stuff happens. So in, for instance, Emacs, you can actually jump there or, or if you're using a, any kind of different ID or text editor, you would be able to uh, jump there. So we actually report precisely where an error has happened, uh, which is quite convenient. So on top of that, we also detect uh, cycles, right? If you're trying to, for instance, clone uh, think like like each other. So there you go. We have a cycle in here, uh, and uh, if you um, if you try to run it, it will tell you a circular dependency, and it will tell you precisely the place where the circular dependency has happened. Right. So uh, this is basically what we were focusing on in the previous episode of the series, which you can find on uh, YouTube. If you're not uh, subscribed to the YouTube channel, you can find it in here if you're interested. All right, so, and today, as I already mentioned, I wanna focus on more arithmetic operations because we only support plus. So let's take a look at what we have in here. So uh, here is a pretty good file, right? So here's a pretty good file. Let's try to use that file in our build system, right? Right. If I try to run it, uh, it complains because B1, oh, it tries to actually uh, add this cell in here. So I suppose we have to put B0 in here. There we go. So, and if I try to use minus, it will complain unknown token starts with minus. And that is precisely what I want to try to fix today. We can try to add more arithmetic operations. I don't know. Uh, just to test things out, but it will fail on the first one anyway. So just to get the idea what we're going to be doing today. So I'm gonna add uh, four main arithmetic operations and then maybe function calls. And that's gonna be pretty much it with this project. So uh, yeah, sounds good.
second season second season i'm not sure what you mean by second season mm. all right so uh let's get started i suppose this is the last issue as you can see so there's only one last issue and let's actually go ahead and quickly fix it uh so uh let's create the branch so this is going to be the second branch and i'm going to go to here right so expression plus and as you can see uh we only have a plus right but i want to kind of generalize this sort of like plus ast node i want to turn it into like binary operation node right so uh maybe we're gonna actually have some sort of enumeration so we see we have an enumeration that describes the kind of expression that you can have you can have a number cell or plus uh maybe uh we're gonna say that the, the kind of the expression is gonna be not plus but rather a binary operation but the binary operation is actually too long to type something like maybe bin op would be a little bit shorter or maybe um bop yeah i, th I think that's perfect so this is gonna be bop uh so yeah expression kind bop so and uh here we're probably gonna have something like expression bop right so this is a binary operation and i suppose uh it would be also nice to have some sort of like a kind of the bop if you know what i'm talking about right so this is going to be bop kind uh right like this and bop kind is going to be enumeration yet again uh bop kind mm bob kind plus so right now we're going to have only one kind of uh, binary operation which is the plus so this is roughly the change i want to make so i guess i'm going to give that to the compiler and do the compiler assisted refactoring so uh, that will break code in all, all of the places and we're going to go through the code and just fix all of the compilation errors all right so let's go ahead and do that Let's do a compilation of our nation. Oh, oh, oh. So, okay, so this is going to be expression bop, and this one is going to be bop. Pepper paints, pepper paints. Okay. So, when we are doing parse plus expression, mm, 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 maybe what we have to do in here, maybe we have to rename this to parse bop expression. I think that's going to be a little bit better uh so and in here uh we're also gonna have to call it pop expression mm, okay so this is the kind it's gonna be bop uh -huh. mm -hmm. so expression as bop lhs here's the lhs index uh, rhs index and i suppose we also have to do something like as bop kind and the kind is going to be bop kind plus right there we go so that's pretty much everything i wanted to do in here and then um uh, we initialize the position in the file and so on and so forth nothing particularly special mm, okay so here we have a function that dumps everything okay this one is interesting so this is going to be pop and i suppose within the pop uh we're gonna do switch mm, switch upon expression as bop kind right and depending on the kind of the bop uh we're gonna do the following thing so it's gonna be bop kind plus right so it's gonna be something like this this one's gonna break and as we add more binary operation kinds we're gonna add more things in here for sure so uh we're gonna have a default in here so maybe for the default we're gonna always like throw in uh, some sort of uh assert right mm, so unreachable unreachable uh, your memory is probably corrupted somewhere uh, right and in here we're gonna exit with one just in case as well so and here maybe I'm gonna actually print it like this bop plus there we go uh, to indicate that we're gonna have other sort of bops in here uh, so then we just dump LHS and RHS so it's gonna be like this uh and i suppose i also want to put a default uh to that one as well i think that would make sense there we go 
Uh, all right, so if I recompile this entire thing, so what do we have in here? Okay, so when we parse an expression, we don't have a parse plus anymore because we don't have a notion of a plus anymore. We have a binary operation notion, right? So uh, we're renaming that. Uh, okay, so evaluation. Okay, evaluation is rather interesting. Oh boy. Okay, this is actually kind of cool. So if it's going to be a bop, right? So we first evaluate left operand and then the right operand. And what kind of operation we're going to apply to it will depend on the bop kind, right? So this is going to be something like expression as bop. And this one, of course, is bop. All right, bop kind. Uh -huh. So in this particular situation, this one is going to be bop kind plus. There we go. So here is the plus. Uh, and in here, we're going to have unreachable situation, assert uh, unreachable, there we go, and then we're going to exit with uh, one, there we go. So do we need anything else in here? I think everything uh, looks okay. So what do we have in here? Oh, now we're cloning expressions. Okay, cloning expressions is quite important in here. Uh, cloning expressions is quite important. I suppose maybe um, for the operations it doesn't really matter. All right, so we don't really need to distinguish between different kinds of binary operations. We can just copy their kind and that is it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here we're cloning LHS and RHS, right? So here we cloned everything, uh, we moved everything. And um, I suppose in here, what I'll have to do, I'll have to do new expression as bop kind. And the kind that I'll need in here, I suppose, is going to be the root kind. Not 100% sure. Uh, hmm, this one is rather, rather, rather interesting. So maybe I'll have to save that kind in here. Uh, bob kind kind uh, right so Gia by the way I, I'm I, I started to work with the uh, relative pointers like with these like small transactions right <laughs> so basically uh, I open a transaction and I try to forget the absolute pointer as soon as possible and I try to make sure that uh, I don't do any operations in here that can potentially allocate more memory and reallocate the base of the relative pointer and it actually kind of helps to you know work with this kind of code I wish there was a language where it would be easier but i think that's reasonable uh yeah so with the language support it would be way easier mm, this cap c plus plus operator will only be well, interestingly enough and ironically in rust it would be also quite convenient uh because the borrow checker won't allow you to maybe it will it will yeah, the borrow checker won't allow you to actually hold these pointers for very long. And as soon as you will try to reallocate the base of this pointer, the lifetimes won't match and this thing won't compile. I think in Rust it's also going to be uh, like relatively safe to do this kind of thing. I think borrow checker unironically kind of solves this problem. But it doesn't really make it convenient, right? So Rust is not about making a programming convenient. Uh, it's about complaining. <laughs> I don't know. Rust doesn't solve uh, any problems. Like it just it only complains about problems, right? <laughs> uh, anyway, so here we have that. Uh, it's gonna be kind mm, root expression as um, bop, and we need to save the kind in here. So I suppose. Um, Interestingly, we could probably save the whole BOP in that particular case, right? So because LHS and RHS and kind are the BOP, right? So this would be something like expression uh, BOP, BOP, and we're going to put it in here. Might as well as you initialize it. And uh, here I can do just something like BOP equal root expression as bop right and then we're going to remove this entire thing there we go so we just extracted bop um and now here so i like literally copied this entire thing uh so bop lhs and we're reassigning bop lhs one more time and in here i suppose i can just straight up say that the new expression is going to be the new bop this is okay so that looks reasonable i think mm -mm.
All right, so what do we have in here? Move expression in uh, here. Oh, and of course, this one has to be Bob, right? And specific Bob doesn't really uh, matter, right? Because it's just like, uh, yeah, it doesn't matter. Uh, simple. Uh, kind, new expression is going to be kind because it's going to be cloned from the, from the root expression. Uh, okay, so that is it, apparently. Uh, that compiled perfectly. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Okay, so let me see if I can run this entire thing. Uh, Alright, so it still doesn't run, but we can try to do the stress test and see if the stress test is running. Okay, so I didn't see any anything fishy in here. Everything is okay so far and we can try to run it with Valgrind. Uh, so hopefully with Valgrind there will be no errors. Okay, so zero errors, zero leaked memory. Cool. What about uh, Clang? If I run it with Clang... Um, so I suppose with Clang it also should be alright. Okay, cool. Uh, so... Mm -mm -mm. Mm, so it's gonna be two. Uh, replace um, expression plus with expression bop, which stands for binary operator. Mm, 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 mm. Okay. No build, not no build.c. So in the first thing I want to do, I want to introduce new kind of binary operation, right? So we already have plus and I simply want to introduce bob kind minus. That's it. And hopefully that will fail the compilation in all of the necessary places. Hopefully, I don't know. And uh, after we go to all these places, uh, we're going to have a working feature. Probably not because I didn't really set anything specific for it to fail. Um, okay, so we have this thing at least. Um, which is not particularly useful, so this is the code that I don't really use very often anyway. So <laughs> think compiler. Uh, this is going to be minus. Right, so here is the minus. And the second one, uh, yeah, this is evaluation. But in terms of parsing, it's not going to really introduce anything new. Right, so uh, it's only in terms of like evaluation. Uh, right, so return LHS minus RHS. There we go. So, and let's recompile, and yes, yeah, it's, it's still not going to um, make it easy for you, right? So we'll have to do something like this. So I suppose first thing we'll have to do, we'll have to add support for minus to the tokenizer, right? Because even the tokenizer doesn't even support that. So unknown token starts with this thingy, right? Unknown token. So uh, I suppose yeah, we can say if this thing uh, is equal to plus or uh, it is equal to minus, right? We're gonna just return it. Uh, and it kind of worked, but nothing really complained anywhere, um, which is kind of sus, not gonna lie. So we need to find the par uh, parse bob expression. Okay, so this one is rather interesting. So. Mm -mm. I have LHS. Mm. So maybe we'll have to transform this into a while loop. I think transforming that into a while loop would be a pretty good solution for this entire stuff. Mm, 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 mm. So this is basically the transaction, right? So we're just taking the, the pointer, the absolute pointer of this thing and just filling this in and then closing the transaction. <laughs> So it's like transactional memory or something, even though we're not doing multi-threading or any concurrent stuff. Well, it's kind of concurrent. It's like a single-threaded concurrency. So because of this race conditions, like the pointers can get invalidated or something. I don't know. Depends on the definition of race condition. Uh, um, mm -hmm. All right. So... Mm. I'm just thinking, so while uh, we have something within this token, right, and that token is equal to plus, right, or it is equal to minus, right, it is equal to minus, we're gonna be uh, trying to uh, trying to parse the right hand side, 
right and then here depending on um, depending on whether it's a plus or minus right uh we're going to be assigning like different things in here um right so maybe we're going to do something like if as we equal uh as we equal uh right so that means this is going to be assigned in here uh otherwise uh, if it's minus uh we're going to be assigning minus in here right this is going to be something like this and otherwise this is pretty much unreachable right so this is going to be uh, unreachable uh and that should be it right that should be pretty much it mm, and to be fair well we could try to do that recursively but i'm not sure if i want to do that recursively mm. yeah i should have done that recursively okay so and, and i kind of already do that recursively so it doesn't really matter uh, it's gonna be that or that and uh, then I go to the right side and I just do that bob yet again so here is a recursive thing uh, and yeah that, that is that should be it actually I think that should be it uh, okay so let me announce uh, things starts with that okay so let's actually try to do this kind of thing uh, and I think I want to test this kind of stuff, right? So I want to create a test bench, right? Where we're going to be dumping the expressions, uh, right? So I need to do something like this in rxc. Uh, maybe we don't even need this kind of stuff, right? So this is going to be void. This is going to be two, uh, right? And we're going to have a source code, source sv static. Uh, and uh, we're gonna have one plus two minus three. So that's basically what I wanna see in here. Parse expression. So if I need to parse expression, what kind of stuff do I need in here? So I'll definitely need uh, these three things. Okay, so the first uh, thing is gonna be the Lexa, right? And uh, what goes into the Lexa? Uh, I suppose nothing much. We can probably initialize everything as zero except line start. Uh, I suppose uh, line start is going to be source data and then the source itself is going to be the source, right? So the source and source data, uh, file path doesn't matter, file row doesn't matter, so all of that is just like whatever. Uh, temporary string is quite important for uh, number conversions and also expression buffer. Uh, right, expression buffer also is very important and we're going to pass all of that in there just to parse this uh, source expression. Okay, so it's going to be something like this. Uh, TC and then EB. There we go. So that should give us the expression index. So, and then we should have a function dump expression, right? So to be able to dump the expression, we'll have to provide the uh, file into which we're dumping, then the expression buffer, the expression index itself, and uh, level is usually zero. It's just only for indentation and stuff like that. Right. Primarily for the indentation. So uh, let me try to run this entire thing. And as you can see, it worked out. Right, at the root we have plus, uh, right, the left hand side is essentially one, the right hand side is a minus, uh, and as you can see it's two and three. And I wonder, is it, uh, what is going to be equal to? Uh, can we just evaluate it? I think we won't be able to evaluate it, because uh, evaluation is uh, like tightly tied uh, to a table so you cannot evaluate expression outside of the table because expressions may contain cells so expression may potentially try to reach to a table so without the table you cannot evaluate anything it's a part of the constant context mm. Mm. all right so um Let's try to evaluate the expression and see if we successfully added the minus operation. Uh, all right, so let me see. So this is gonna be CSV, uh, full CSV. Um, I'm just thinking it's probably gonna be one plus, plus two, right? So, and let's see if it's gonna be the correct one. So cell may not contain uh, in math expressions. Ooh. 
text cells. But this is... Ah, because it is text cell, so it has to start with equals to not be a text cell anymore. Okay, so that, that's fair. Okay, so uh, 1 plus 2 is 3. So can I now do something like um, 4 minus 3, right? And it's working. Okay, 4 minus 3 is 1, and we added support for the minus operator. Right, so uh, now we have a support for the minus operator for the binary one. For the binary one, not, not for the honorary one. Uh, uh, one. I don't know how to say that word, it's a really a weird word. Uh, let me see. Uh, how do you pronounce that word? Unary? Ur urinal operators. Yeah, urinal operators. Um, Unary. Yeah, urinal operators. Okay, so thank you so much, uh, Google Translate. Urinal operators. Mm. Uh, let me see. So this is going to be that. Uh, this is going to be two. Uh, add support for minus a binary operator. Uh, and let's push that right to the repo. Okay, so we need to add now support for multiplication and division. And as we add support for them, we also need to add the uh, precedence for them as well. Mm -mm, mm -mm. So, yesu, 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 kawaii freaking desu, is it not? Mm -hmm. Alrighty, alrighty. So, I'm gonna go to here and uh, yet again, so this is gonna be 420, right? And here we're gonna try to add multiplication. So, as you can see, a known token starts with this kind of shit. Um, okay. Oh, another interesting thing. Uh, look, uh, a known token starts with uh, asterisks. Uh, if I add support for the asterisk in, uh, in the tokenizer, Alexa, um, next token, right? The problem will go away. The problem will go away, but it is not correct, it still should fail, but it should fail for a different reason. You know why it doesn't fail? Because we don't check for the situation that we uh, didn't consume the whole Lexa. Yeah, 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 there we go. So after this thing, after we parse the expression, the entirety of the, uh, of the Lexa has to be consumed. It just has to be consumed. Um, and what I'm thinking is that, hmm, how can we check for that? The, the original caller of this thing uh, has to actually say that uh, you didn't parse everything. Um, <clears throat> so maybe we're going to do the following thing. So where do we call parse expression? So we only call it, we only call it in a single place. So that means in here, right? If Lexa source uh, count Mm, 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 mm. Maybe we can even do something like Alexa um, token, uh, maybe next token, right? So we look for the next token and that should return as a token. And if this thing is not equal to null, right? So maybe I'm going to even just put it like that. Right, this is going to be token, uh, token, uh, and there we go. Mm, all right, so uh -huh. if the token equal to uh, not equal to null, uh, that means um, that we haven't parsed everything. So we need to throw an error about that. Uh, std error, uh, s z u uh, z u error, um, unexpected uh, token, and we can print that token, I suppose, somewhere here. So this is going to be svfmt. And then this is going to be the new line. So the first thing we're going to do is a file path. The token itself actually has its own location, right? It has its own location. Then uh, we have a file row and a file column, right? And after that, we're going to print the actual token text. Uh, token uh, text, there we go. So, and then we're going to exit with one. Mm, all right, so Alexa has to be uh, passed by a pointer, so token, uh, I think it has to be text data, yeah. Uh, yeah, there we go, this is actually perfect. 
uh, right, an expected token too. So that indicates that we haven't parsed the whole expression, right? We haven't parsed the whole expression. So let me do a committee committee for this specific thing because I think it is uh, quite important. Mm, to add support for uh, this token to the Lexa, right? To the Lexa. Mm -hmm. Fail um, if the uh, parsing did uh, not process everything. Right, and we're gonna push that right into the repo. Mm -hmm. Alrighty, so uh, what do we have in here? Mm -hmm. Expected token, um, and yes, yeah, so basically we need to do parse uh, Bob expression. Okay, so it would be relatively straightforward to just add the following thing, right? Um, uh, if the token not null and token equal plus or minus or multiplication, right? Uh, multiplication, and if it is multiplication, Right, if it is multiplication, we're going to interpret that binary operation as multiplication, right? So it's going to be mult. Uh, but that completely ignores any sort of uh, sense of precedence, right? That completely ignores that. Uh, so I can try to do that. Oh, we don't even have a Bob kind. Okay, so this is going to Bob kind, and this is going to be multiplication. Mm, all right, so and we have a couple of things in here uh, and let's put this stuff in here So this is going to be multiplication and this is going to be multiplication There we go. Even though I don't really use this uh, Specific piece of code, but it's sometimes it's useful when I need to debug things, right? Sometimes I want to dump the the AST of the expression um, All right, so what do we have in here? Uh, we have uh, this thing Right, so uh, this is going to be multiplication of our nation, and there we go. So yeah, it is kind of working, but it's uh, working rather incorrectly because it doesn't take into account the precedence in any way, shape, or form. Right, so if I do something like one plus two, uh, right, so um, yeah, yeah, I keep forgetting that I have to put this thing. So it's going to be three. If I multiply that by two, right, it's actually five. So I suppose uh, it multiplied this by two. Um, and then edit one, which is correct. But if I swap them around, right, if I swap them around, uh, this is completely incorrect, right? So basically what it did, it first computed two plus one, which turned, to, uh, turned out to be three, and then it multiplied by two, and the final result got uh, turned into six, right? So this is because we completely ignored the precedence, right? So we'll need to introduce the notion of the precedence at some point. Uh, okay, so maybe before we introduce the notion of the precedence, I want to add the fourth uh, operation in there, like uh, division, um, right? And in the lexer uh, next token, right? So in here, uh, we're going to add the following thing, right? So this is going to be the division, uh, and I already add the token division. Okay, so let's actually go through this entire thing. So in here, we're going to have uh, the division, right? So here is the division. And then uh, here we have interpretation of our nation. So this is division and this is division uh, was the next part and everything seems to be working. Uh, let's try to add division like this and I'm pretty sure it's gonna fail yeah unexpected token 69 because we don't have support for this kind of thing in the parser so parse expression uh, parse pop expression right so and again it's gonna be very dumb uh, we're gonna just add like copy paste this specific thing in here right <laughs> right if uh, if the token is one of those things right so that means it's probably a binary operation uh and then here uh if it's a division we're gonna do this kind of thing so i think that should be all right and uh i think it is working right so we have a division to some extent uh but as far as i can tell it it actually computed in this order so first this thing gets computed gets computed then this thing and so on and so forth without regarding like any sort of uh precedence right so, but it does support uh, four basic arithmetic operations, right? It does support them. So um, let's let's do a committee committee. Uh, to, 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 to. <clears throat> 
going to be two. Add support for uh, multiplication and division, right? Multiplication and division. So, and the things that we're missing right now, right? We're missing um, binary operator presidents, right? Did I, did I spell it correctly? Uh, let me actually Google that. Mm, presidents, right? Uh, operator presidents, then um, parenthesis, uh, parenthesis, right? We need to have that. Uh, urinal minus, right? So we need to have a urinal minus. Do we need to have anything else? Um, probably function calls, right? So function calls. And once we have function calls, we can implement a bunch of functions in there. Mm -hmm. Right, and I suppose these are the things that are left to implement in here. Uh, binary operator presidency is quite important because majority of people uh, ex uh, who use this kind of software, they expect the mathematical presidents of the binary operators. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, let's do a committee committee. Um, okay. So this is going to be the rest of the work, right? Then I'm going to push that right into the repo. All right, so uh, we're going to continue working on the rest of the uh, to-dos after a small break because uh, I want to make a cup of tea, right? So I didn't make a cup of tea before the stream, so and I kind of regret it. So let's make a small break and uh, then continue. All right, I got my tea uh, and uh, let's introduce binary operator presidents. How about that? How about that? So how I'm going to be introducing all that? I don't know. Uh, I usually uh, it helps to have some sort of enumeration for different kinds of tokens. We already have a token uh, structure, right? But we don't really have a token kind enumeration, right? So maybe we're going to introduce something like this in here. Um, mm -mm -mm -mm. So it's going to be enumeration, right? So I'm going to have a token kind. So... Um, Token kind, uh, and we're gonna have like a different kinds of tokens for the operators, like plus, uh, minus, uh, multiply. Maybe it's gonna be uh, aster asterisk, right? So um, this one is gonna be dash. So this is a plus. This is a dash. This is an asterisk. I intentionally try to call them slightly differently so you can separate sort of like the token and the operation. Right, so uh, yeah, this is a token, this is just a symbol, but it represents a particular operation. The symbol is a dash, but it represents the uh, minus operation, right? Or like maybe it should have been called subtract or something like that. I don't know. And this one is slash, All right? So something like this. Uh, and uh, another thing we can have in here is probably token uh, name, right? Something like token name. <clears throat> Okay, uh, and we're gonna add this kind of thing in here. So this is gonna be token kind, and there you go. Here is the token kind. So when we're doing uh, allocation of these things, um, I suppose depending on the uh, specific tokens, we'll have to set different kinds. Uh, and the reason why I wanted to introduce this sort of kind is because I also now can introduce something that I would call maybe, um, I don't know, token definition? Mm, maybe list of uh, like hard-coded tokens and whatnot. Right, a list of hard-coded tokens. Um, <laughs> so it could be something like um yeah mm. <laughs> because i need a, a table that uh gives a correspondence between a character and the actual token kind you see what i'm talking about you see what i'm talking about um Maybe token kind is not particularly a great idea, generally. Yeah, I don't think it's that great of an idea. Mm. For, for our specific case, I do usually introduce token kinds for bigger parsers, right? Like for my programming language, right? So because my programming language, uh, let me, let's take a look at it. 
So it has a lot of different tokens. Uh, and in fact, it looks like this. So for, for this kind of, to parse this kind of thing, uh, I need special token kinds. But we're talking about very simple mathematical expression parser. So maybe introducing this kind of thing is uh, an overkill. So I suppose I'm not gonna do that. So we're gonna only operate on the level of the, these things, uh, if you know what I'm talking about, right? Um, mm -mm -mm -mm. So, and what I wanted to introduce, I wanted to introduce the binary operation, like, definition table, which describes the kind of the binary operation, uh, the token that is associated with the binary uh, operation, and its pres presidents, right, so we need something like that, if you know what I'm talking about, uh, right, so let's define uh, a structure, and this is going to be Bob def. this is a Bob definition. So in the Bob definition, we have the uh, kind of the binary operation, right? So here's the kind. Then we need to have an associated token, right? So what is the token that is associated uh, with this specific binary operation? And uh, we also want to have precedence, precedence. Uh, and it's going to be basically a size t integer of some sort, right? So size t integer. The higher the integer, the higher is the precedence. Yeah. So that's basically what I wanted to have. Uh, and uh, maybe I'm going to just go ahead and define the Bob definitions, right? So it's going to be static uh, table, uh, Bob def, Bob defs, right? So we're not going to know the size of it. Uh, we're going to uh, basically compute that size. Um, so, and yeah, in the first one is going to be something like kind equal Bob kind uh, plus right so the token that is associated with this thing is um, static, is basically plus and the precedence uh, is going to be the lowest precedence it's going to be zero right so the next one is going to be the minus binary operation right so here's the minus binary operation and uh, it's going to has have the same precedence as the plus so, and now here comes the uh, multiplication operation. So it is associated with this thing and it has a higher precedence than minus and plus. Uh, and the last binary operation we're gonna have in here is uh, division, right? It's associated with the slash and it has the same precedence as the multiplication. So there we go, we have a, a binary operation definition table, which we can then use for parsing and, uh, you know, uh, correctly interpreting the precedence and stuff like that, if that makes any sense. All right, so we also need to know the size of this entire thing. So I suppose, like I want to actually mark this at const because I don't plan to modify it, right? It's a static const uh, table, right? And maybe we're gonna have something like const, const um, size t uh, bop devs uh, count, right? And it's gonna be equal to uh, size of this divided by its size of its element, right, something like this. And um, I also like to introduce some sort of like a getter. Um, maybe maybe getter for, for this specific thing is not really important because we're always going to be sort of iterating through this entire stuff. Though... Um, I think... I mean, the amount of these definitions is the amount of binary operations, right? So that means here we can actually introduce the classical pattern of count both kinds. Yeah, there we go. I, I didn't think about that for some reason, right? So this is going to be count both kinds, and there we go, right? And also I, I like to do the, the static thing, right? Static uh, assert, right? And uh, we expect precisely four of them in here. Uh, the amount of uh, binary operator uh, operators uh, have has changed. Please adjust the definition table accordingly. Right there we go. So we're gonna have a static in here. We already included a search, so that thing should just work. Hopefully. That thing should just work. Um, hmm. And in here, I probably can use designated initializers, uh, right? So, and just essentially associate this entire stuff like so, right? This is gonna be like this. 
Which actually brings a question, do we, need, do we even need a kind in here? Do we even need a kind? Uh, because we kind of know that the position within the array is the kind. So I'm going to remove the kind for now because I'm not really sure if it's needed. Uh, we definitely need token and the presidents. So uh, let's remove that. Cool. So here is the mapping of the operator, right? And then here is the token and here is the presidents and we're going to use these things accordingly. Uh, for the presidents, I also like to uh, have a special enumeration, but we'll get into that a little bit later. Uh, get into that a little bit later. Okay, so we're talking kind. We don't have a talking kind anymore. So what else do we have in here? So Bob kind. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. So we'll need to add case count Bob uh, kinds in here, like so. Uh, what else do we have in here? So we have something like this: case count Bob kinds. There we go. Uh, do we have anything else? So now it just says that this is unused variable, which is fine, I guess. Which is fine. Um, so the thing uh, I mentioned I like to introduce is um, the function that basically performs boundary check, right? So get bob def, uh, and you would provide bob kind, and it will return you bob definition, right? And the most important thing in here, it will assert that the kind is less than count bob kinds, right? And only then it will try to you know use this thing because you know uh, you know safety is is the first priority in here though um do enumerations have like unsigned value behind them do i need to check for a negative value as well mm, i don't remember what c uses for for enumerations um c type of enum so what is the integer uh, data type consists of int integral constants. Uh, I, I suppose it could be negative. Mm. Because in C++ you can specify what's going to be like a backing type for uh, for the enumeration in C. I'm not sure if you'll be able to do that. This is a horrible website, by the way. Uh, I don't know why Google promotes such a horrible website, but it, it does for some reason. Um... <laughs> What's the size of enumeration in C? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. An enum is only guaranteed to be large enough to hold int. The compiler is free to choose the actual type used based on the enumeration constant defined, so it can choose a smaller type if it can represent. Okay, so I think it would be uh, better just in case to check that uh, this thing, uh, you know, greater or equal than zero, right? So um, just, you know, to, to make sure, I don't know. Because all of that is kind of sus, not gonna lie. What do you guys think? I think it is in fact kind of sus. Um, it's sus. Mm, okay. <sighs> all right, so here is the definitions and stuff like that. And when I do parse expression, right, so here's the parse expression, we start parse bob expression. Uh, but we need to start it with a specific precedence, that's for sure, right? We need to start it with a specific precedence. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So here is the token, and depending on that token, mm -hmm. so we'll need a special function that, given the token can return you a binary definition, so bob def, right, so let me see, mm, maybe because of that we don't really need this function, but I'm gonna keep it just in case, bob def, uh, bob def um, by token, right, this is gonna be string view, uh, so this is the token, right, and uh, in here we're gonna be just iterating through the definitions, right, so this is gonna be bob kind, kind equals zero, kind less than count bob kinds, uh, this is gonna be uh, bob kind, and if uh, bob devs uh, kind token is equal, uh, it is equal to the uh, specified token, right, if it's equal to specified token, we just return, straight up return 
the uh, definition in here. Otherwise, um, yeah, we also need to indicate that there is nothing to return. Maybe because of that, we're going to be returning the pointer because that makes it easier to return the null, right? Uh, it just makes it easier to return the null. Okay. Um, and because of that, we also still need to know the kind of this entire stuff. I, like, I wasn't sure if I want to include the kind into the definition, so I, I can clearly see that we do need the kind. Uh, so let's put it like this, and uh, I'm gonna just go like that. Right, so this is gonna be a kind. Uh, boom, there we go. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now you can take the Bob definition by a token, um, and uh, cool, nothing, nothing special. Uh, so const from yeah, it is true. So it has to be const because you are not allowed to modify that specific thing. So parse Bob expression, right? And I suppose you need to actually have the precedence in here. So it's going to be size t precedence, precedence, uh, the current precedence. So, and instead of this thing, all right, instead of this thing, uh, I think we're going to do, um, so you have the data, right? You have the data. I think it doesn't matter because we can just straight up do a uh, bop definition, right? Uh, definition, bop definition by token. And if the token is empty, there's no associated operator with that. Uh, there's no associated definition with that token anyway, so it doesn't matter. Right, so if uh, definition is not equal to null and the definition precedence definition precedence is equal to the uh, to the current precedence, uh, we're gonna actually try to parse this entire thing. But we're gonna be parsing it by increasing the precedence, right? Uh, so we increase the precedence in here, and the exact kind of the operator we're gonna be using in here is actually located in the Bob definition. Uh, definition um, kind. So, and we can easily just remove this entire thing. Okay. That was actually easier than I expected. <laughs> what the fuck? Uh, wait. Uh, so this is the prime. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. So this is not enough. We'll need to know that we reach the maximum precedence. Yeah. We need to know that we reach the maximum precedence. Uh, I usually what I like to do is introduce enumeration for the presidents right so i already did that in my programming language i'm going to probably do that here as well uh right so let's introduce something like enumeration um bob uh, precedence uh, bob precedence okay uh, bob precedence zero uh initially zero then we have bob precedence one uh, and then we have count bob uh, precedence, uh, precedence. I wish it auto complete that for me. Okay, thank you so much. Right, so something like this. Uh, and we're gonna use this value to know when to stop the recursive descent of the uh, of the binary operator parsing. Right. So um, we're gonna put Bob uh, precedence zero in here. Um, might as well copy paste this entire thing. Uh, right. Just copy paste this entire thing. Uh, it's gonna be one, and it's gonna be one. There we go. Um, right, parse uh, Bob expression. Right, uh, and here is this thing. Uh, if the precedence precedence is greater or equal to count uh, Bob precedence. Uh, that means we need to try to parse the entire thing as the primary expression, right? We, we straight up return parse primary expression, so we reach the leaf of the entire thing. Uh, now we need to do something like Bob expression, and for the left part, the pre precedence is going to be actually higher, right? 
uh, right, the precedence is actually higher, but uh, for the right hand side, it's going to be the same, right? Because we're going to continuously parse on this entire thing. Um, and I guess that's it. Uh, I guess that's everything I wanted to have. And as we start doing this stuff, right, it has to be Bob precedence zero. We're starting with the smallest precedence. Uh, I guess that is it. So that's the support for the presidents. We can try to now create a, a simple, you know, test bench which dumps the AST and just see how all of that works out. You see how all of that works out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's see if this entire thing compiles. Maybe I'm going to actually compile it without running. Okay, of course it doesn't compile. So token, I think it have to be text, right? So this is the text. Uh, definition kind, yeah, you have to dereference this entire thing and everything seems to be working. Okay, so let's go to the main uh, and let's do main like this. So this is going to be Lexa. Uh, this is going to be Lexa and uh, Lexa. So, and we need to have a source, right? So let's actually define a source. SV static. Uh, right, so static is going to be 1 plus 2 plus 3. Uh, and source is going to be this. Um, uh, two, 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 two. I have an idea actually. Hmm. So we can specify file path. So if we're going to have any parsing or lexing errors, our Lexa is going to report errors within the source code file. <laughs> but uh, in terms of the row, uh, I'm not really sure uh, which row is it going to use, like file row. We can do something like source uh, line, right, size t, uh, and this is going to be line, but plus one. Right, so that means this thing will point at here, and we can just put the row in here, like that. So we already know the row where it's gonna fail and stuff like that. Uh, in terms of the line start, this one is a little bit more difficult, right? The line start is more of a, yeah, it has to be a, a pointer. So I don't think we can easily do that, but we can try maybe, question mark, eh. but yeah, so. Um, line start, but that's actually a very interesting idea. So we can just force it to report errors within the source code file where it's defined. It's not a bad idea, actually. I think it's pretty cool. Okay, Lolo, what's up? How are you doing? Uh, welcome, welcome to the streamers. Um, okay, source data. There we go. So this is the Lexa uh, parse expression, right? So this is the shit that we need to parse the expression. I'm gonna actually put everything here. Uh, right, luckily uh, initializing TMP STR and expression buffer is um, actually trivial, right? So it's gonna be TC, it's gonna be that. Uh, expression buffer uh, EB zero, there we go. So, and now I wanna do something like this. So I'm gonna just pass the entire stuff in here and here is the expression index. So now I can try to dump uh, expression like so. Uh, it's gonna be std out, uh, eb, the expression index and the level is gonna be zero. Uh, so now uh, we're gonna return the entire thing. And return the entire thing. Mm -hmm. So is it compiles? I think it does compile. Okay, so if I try to run, uh, well, I mean, I fucked it up. Let's try to run it one more time. And uh, it actually turned out to be one, which is completely incorrect. Uh, and I don't, I don't know why. Um, so I would like to also report an error Right, uh, I would like to report an error if we can't parse everything. So we already did that in uh, here. Parse expression, right? So here's parse expression. And here we report when um, the uh, lexer is not fully, 
is not fully parsed. Maybe we're gonna take this entire thing and extract it into something like Alexa. Expect uh, no tokens, right? And we're gonna provide uh, Alexa in here. Tokens, right? And uh, let's uh, go, uh, Alexa, next token. And I'm gonna actually put this thing in here. Uh, Mm, void Alexa, uh, expect no tokens. This is going to be the pointer to the Alexa. And uh, we're going to just put it like that, I suppose. Um, <clears throat> so, all right. Mm, so, Alexa next token should be defined down there, right? Because C, thank you very much, C. Uh, and in main, right, uh, after we parsed everything, I should uh, actually say Lexa, expect no tokens. All right, and if there is still some tokens in there, please report that. Unexpected token. Yeah, you see? <laughs> this is the cool thing about Alexa. Look at that. Uh, you have compilation errors, they're reported within the definition of the source code because in Alexa we said set file to the source code and set the line to the line where this thing is defined, right? So <laughs> Alexa doesn't give a shit, right? It will report whatever the file is in there, so uh, it, it if you provide it like the file it will report it in here, so... <laughs> And it's the same Lexa that we use for the input CSV files, literally the same thing. This is actually pretty cool. <laughs> Why didn't I think about that before? Yeah, like, because I remember having a problem, like, every time I define source code of the things I parse within the, you know, hard code them, right? So I always tackle, how do I report errors and where do I report errors? Well, this is how you can do that. You can just redirect to the source code where it's defined and it's just like, yeah, works. Is that cool? I think, like, I, I know that it's kind of dumb, but small things like that actually, you know, you know, bright, brighten up my day, right? So, like, you're discovering that you, yeah, you can redirect it to whatever you want, and you can use that to your advantage and stuff like that. So, it's like, this kind of shit, key, like, you know, still keeps me interested in programming after so many years, right? So, discovering these small little tricks and stuff like that, I don't know. I know that majority of people don't give a shit about this kind of stuff, but I do do value do value this kind of stuff. <sighs> Alright, so um, now uh, we, for, for some reason it's not fully parsed, right, for some reason it's not fully parsed, so we need to understand what the hell is going on in here, right, so uh, we start with this sort of precedence, right? So this is going to be the zero, so that one's going to be one. Uh, and, okay, if the precedence that we put in here is greater or equal than the count, that means we have to treat it as the primary expression, right? We're treating it as a primary expression. If it's not a primary expression, so the left-hand side thingy is parsed with a higher precedence. Right, it is parsed with a higher precedence. <sighs> All right, so uh, then we take the next token and then we query its, um, yeah, its stuff, its definition. If the definition is not null um, and its precedence is equal to the current precedence that we're currently handling, uh, we're parsing the right hand side with the same precedence, we sort of continue recursively parsing this entire thing uh, and then uh, continue the rest of the thing. Deep singularity, what's up? Uh, so, but it only parsed like a single number, so that means uh, right away this thing didn't work. What we need to do, we need to understand why. So let's actually go into the debugger. Uh, let's go into the debugger. Uh, so it's gonna be team uh, right, and it's gonna just go in here, right, and uh, might as well actually just do GDB, um, yeah, let's just do GDB, break on main, I suppose, and let's just run this entire thing, uh, to enable, there we go, uh, yep, 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 and we're about to parse this entire thing, okay, so we're going inside. So, if I print the current precedence, it is zero, all right, so uh, we skip that. Mm -hmm. Let me take a look at the Lexa, all right, uh, what's inside of the Lexa. So, 
the source code contains this entire thing, right? The source code contains this entire thing. Uh, I suppose we can try to step into this entire thing. Uh, all right, so stepping into this entire thing and I take a look at the precedence. Uh, all right, so it is one and I step it one more time and then precedents go in here. Uh, it is two and at some point we're gonna actually try to parse it as the primary expression and uh, we're gonna actually return it uh, from the primary expression, right? So, and the currently handling precedents in here, uh, precedence is one, right? So this is what we currently try to handle. Uh, we take the next token. The token itself is in fact plus Right, we take the definition of this entire thing. Definition does exist, and we found the definition for the plus. And, but the precedence, precedence of this plus, uh, is not equal to the one that we're trying to handle. So we're gonna skip this entire thing and just return left hand side. So we're returning back to the precedence of zero. Right, so we get the definition yet again, uh, and. The definition is not correct. Okay, and if I take a look at the... Ah, I see. You need to peek into the token. You need to peek into it. Fuck. Mmm. All right. So, because the previous call actually consumed the token and... Okay. Okay, you just you just need to peek into it instead of instead of doing that. So we need to implement some sort of a look ahead um, for, for 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 the president's apparently. Uga di buga. Can fucking do it. All right, so. Uga di buga. Uh, at least we know what the fuck is going on. Yeah, step debugging is actually a pretty useful technique. So you just go through the entire process and you see precisely what the hell is going on. Just pig, bro. Mm, we'll have to probably introduce some sort of like a pig buffer and some other shit, you know. Do I really want to go into that? Is there any easy way to implement this thing? Is there any easy way to peek into the little can? Lotokan. Okay, so let's just go ahead and command that, I suppose. Um, right. Let's just go ahead and command that. Uh, Lexa uh, next uh, Lotokan. Right, next Lotokan. Usually, how I do that, by the way, I just have uh, in Alexa itself, right, in Alexa itself. Uh, so I suppose the token has to be defined somewhere in here, right? So there we go. Here's the token. Um, I have peak buffer uh, and indication whether peak is available, right? Or, or full, right? So this is basically a peak buffer consisting of the uh, of a single uh, token in there, right? So, and when you do next uh, and something is available in there, it will take, it take it from the peak buffer. Uh, it will take it from the peak buffer. So this entire thing, Lexer next token, I think it should be called uh, Lexer peak token, right? And I suppose it have to accept the token by the pointer and should return an indication whether the token exists there or not. Right. Uh, I wish there was an easy way to do easier way to do that. Right, because picking. Right, if it starts with, there must be easier way to do that because I hate like implementing this buffer thingy. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about? It's just like kind of kind of sus, bruh. Um, one thing we can do: the pick can always return the next token. And then next does the peak and cuts off the size of the peak picked token. And that way we don't have to implement any buffers or anything like that. Yeah, this is a pretty cool and innovative approach, not gonna lie. So that means we don't really need any peak buffers in here. Right, so let's actually um, 
do the following thing. So this is going to be pick. Uh, if uh, nothing in here, we're going to do that. Uh, but here, right. Um, so if you're picking, right, if you're picking, uh, maybe it also makes sense to always return an empty one, right? So this is the empty one, uh, nothing particularly special. So if it's plus or anything like that, uh, the thing that we're returning, in fact, is not really chop left, right? It's not really chop left. It's going to be um, string view. The count is going to be one, right? But the data is going to be the data of the Lexa source. Something like this. And it's not going to modify the original one. And we just return this entire thing. Uh, chop left while. Mm -hmm. So we don't really want to chop anything in here. Uh, how can we, what we can do in here? So it's going to be a sweet chop. Uh, left while, right, a switch up left while. Is there any other while things? I think this is the only one. So that means we'll have to do that ourselves. All right. All right, all right, all right, all right. Um, so... Mm, mm, mm. I don't want to do that. Uh, left while, right, so left while. So we have I until uh aha uh -huh. so this is essentially what we want to have in here while i is less than um i want to have a function like this but without the chop part <laughs> you see what i'm talking about uh i need a thing this thing without the chop Right, because I, I just want to get this thing, uh, but don't chop it. <laughs> uh, yeah, so this is probably what we need to do. Uh, is there any idiom in here? So we have a trim. Um, so we can have trim left, trim chop. Um, so it's always like chop, but maybe we need to introduce something like take. Right, so... Um, so chop left while, but uh, this one is going to be uh, take left while, right? And the reason be uh, difference between take and chop is that take doesn't like remove it from the from the original string, and as a matter of fact, it doesn't even take it by a pointer, right? So the chop one uh, takes it by a pointer, modifying it, and this one does not take it by a pointer. It uh, like keeps this thing uh, original as it was. So. Yeah, that's basically what I want. But that means we'll have to introduce that thing into our string view library. By the way, this is a separate library that you can actually find in here if you're interested in this kind of thing. I'm going to put it in the chat uh, for those who's watching live and in the description for those who's watching uh, on, on YouTube, right? Uh, so this is going to be a string view library. So we'll have to go into our string view library and introduce a version of chop while left, but without the chop, right? We'll need to introduce the idiom like take. Um, does that make sense? Um, hopefully. Mm, okay. So let's go, uh, Uvu. Uh, so this is going to be SV and uh, let me actually fetch the latest thingy in here. Uh, okay, so I think the uh, it's already the latest one. Okay, cool. Uh, so, uh, SV chop uh, left while. Uh -huh, so, and we're gonna put it in here. Take left while. Right. Uh, maybe I'm gonna go to chop left while down there, so they're sort of nearby. Right, and essentially, we're gonna do that thing, right, we're gonna do that thing, but uh, without the chop. So we're gonna simply return string view. Uh, the i will effectively become the size, right? So it will effectively become the size. Um, so count is gonna be i, and the data is going to be the data of the original string. That's it. So that's basically what I want in here. Right, but uh, for this entire thing, we'll have to introduce the 
um, the tests, right? Because we have some unit tests in there. And of course, this entire thing is not even a pointer, so I'll have to replace the arrows with the dots. Uh, and yeah, there we go. Everything seems to be working, but we don't even have any tests for this specific function yet. Uh, right, so let's go into the tests and let's find a sweet shop uh, while. Uh, do we even have chop while? We don't even have a chop. Really? Where is the chop while? Uh, I'll show left while. Okay, so that's that's cool. So let's introduce um, take while. Right. <clears throat> so uh, chop while is alpha. I suppose I can actually steal this unit tests, right? Just seal them and see how they work. And the only thing I'm going to do in here, I'm going to replace chop with take and just see uh, how different the results are. Uh, and over this one is not really uh, over chop, it's more of an overtake, right? So this is uh, overtake and another chop take and another chop take. Okay, so we're going to use the same tests and we'll just see how the behavior of these two functions differ. Right, so uh, let me see. So this is does not uh, accept the pointer, right? And this one also does not accept the pointer. And here's the failure. So in the original function, if you try to take while is alpha, it will remove it from uh, the original thing. But the actual behavior, it does not remove anything. So it's basically preserved. Yeah, and the same goes here as well. Uh, yep, yep, yep. So... Yeah, I think there we go. So that's basically the, the difference like uh, in the behavior between these two functions. Uh, and that's precisely what I need for my parser here. That's precisely what I need. All right. Isn't that cool? I think it's pretty cool. Okay. So let's uh, create a pull request for this entire thing. Um, SV uh, take Ah, take uh, left while, so maybe I'm gonna actually do it like that. There we go. And uh, implement this thing. And I'm gonna push that right into the repo. Again, if you are happen to be interested in this uh, thing, uh, I published this uh, library uh, on GitHub. All right, so we implemented this entire stuff and let's create the pull request. Mm. Okay, so let's wait for the continuous integration. Mm. Hmm. Uh, you know what? I think while we're waiting for continuous integration, I also am going to make a small break and uh, make a cup of tea because I think I already ran out of tea. So. All right, so the pull request seems to be done, so let's actually merge it. Mm, and then the branch. Okay, so let's actually go to the master and fetch the latest things. Mm. Mm. I recently worked on Excel in SQL plus C sharp code ported from Visual Basic. That's real fun. This that's not what we're doing right now. We're implementing our own Excel from scratch. So um, okay. <clears throat> so now I need to upgrade uh, the string view um, in the in the project. Right. Mm -hmm. So I probably have to put it somewhere here. Uh, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be an uh, upgrade uh, SV library. So this is going to be that. Uh, and now I'm going to go to main.c and uh, I need to do lexa pick, right? So here's the pick, right? So ain't nowhere in here I do the chop. I, at least I'm not supposed to do the chop. Right, so uh, I need to do the take. There we go, and that will not modify the the original thing in here. Uh, okay, cool. So this is going to be that. Then we just take the last one, and there we go. 
Okay, so um, I'm actually looking at the wrong thing in here. So let's do no build and it should not compile because we don't have a Lexer next token. Uh -huh. So a next token is essentially gonna be just like pick. Um, come on, copy paste that, thank you. Uh, right, but it is going to, um, hmm. By the way, I can do additional thing in here. I can try to indicate that this thing does not modify the lexer in any way, right? So I think this can be uh, beneficial. But next does actually modify the lexer, and that's what's important. So we take the token, right? So this is going to be lexer uh, uh, pick uh, token. Uh, lexer pick token. This is going to be the lexer. Right, and uh, the next thing I can do, I can chop the size of the token from the Lexa. Uh, chop left, right, so I'll need this function in here. Uh, yep, yep, yep. And this is how it's gonna work. So we're gonna provide the Lexa source, and the size is gonna be the size uh, of the token, like this. Uh, there we go. And then we can return that token. So there we go. Picking just... Well, picking does need to trim the token and for uh, the, the, the input. Picking does need to trim it. So that means uh, you cannot mark it as const. Picking modifies the state of the Alexa. That's quite important. I didn't think about that. All right, so it does modify the state because it needs to at least trim it. Uh, then it just takes the token and the, the next one takes that token and, uh, you know, actually modifies the input. All right, so let me see if that still works. Okay, so this is uh, this has to be a count. Uh, another one, this one has to be a pointer. And there we go. Okay, so in the node build, uh, I can try to do the stress copy just to see if it's going to work like that. Uh, I can try to run it and yeah, it's, it says unexpected token pulse. Okay, that's perfect. Uh, well, no, not really. So I didn't really test actual thing in here. Right. Uh, yeah. Oh, everything's broken. But this is because the... Uh, Expression parsing is broken, so that's fine, I guess. Um, so yeah, we'll have to first fix that. And then as we fix it, it should work properly. Okay, so here's expression parsing, right? And then uh, Bob parsing. And then here, instead of like doing next, we have to pick into that token. See, we're picking into it. And if we found the token that we want, uh, what we have to do in here, we have to materi materialize that token by doing Lexa uh, next token. Uh, and it's pretty much will be the same token, but I'm just like actually removing it from the Lexa. Uh, right, so, and uh, there we go. It seems to be working. Right, so it parsed uh, plus correctly, like a one plus two plus three expression correctly, if I understand. If, uh, if I didn't make any mistake. Okay, so if I have minus in here, uh, yeah, so here is the plus, here is the minus. So everything is parsed correctly. Now, look, if I put multiplications in here, right, so it recognized it as a multiplication, and here is a multiplication. But now, if I swap arguments around, so now this is uh, gonna be like that. Will it move it around? There we go. The multiplication has a higher precedence, right? It moves everything accordingly. So we implemented parser with the precedents um, correctly. So that's pretty cool. Um, that is very, very useful. All right, so I'm gonna actually put something like this in here and let's take a look at the stress test, right? So uh, the stress test looks correct as far as you can tell. Uh, everything seems to be looking correctly and we do in fact support the precedents. We didn't really break anything that much. Cool. Uh, so we can try to maybe, we can already do some interesting shit, if you ask me. Uh, we can already, already sort of calculate like expenses on like bills and stuff like that, I think. Um, that's, that's not bad, I think, I think we can do something about that. 
Um. Mm -hmm. Let me see. Can we actually just try to have a basic like expenses calculation? Uh, for instance, uh, expenses maybe maybe bills, right? Bills, CSV, right? So this is going to be CSV. Um, I don't know. First one is going to be. Um, I don't know. So the amount of A, right? Maybe the first one is going to be actually date, right? So what's the date to date? It's going to be seventeen zero uh, zero seven. Uh, I think that we, we actually write the dates like this. So this is going to be something like that. Uh, right. So this is the date. This is the current date. So uh, then amount of A, right? So this is the amount of A. And let's say it's going to be 69 for 20, right? Around 69 for 20. And this is the price of A. Uh, and it's going to be around 250 or something. Right, and basically sum uh, is going to be um, so a uh, so this is going to be a b c so this is going to be b and c b multiplied by c uh, but for the row one right so we just multiply these things together. Uh, we just multiply these things together, right? Um, and now, if I try to run this entire thing, uh, builds CSV. Uh, well, it has to be actually equal, right? And there we go. So it actually multiplied them together, right? It actually multiplied them together, which is uh, pretty nice. So next thing, what we can do? So if we have the next day, right? We have a next day, and we have a different sort of like. Uh, amount of, of these things right uh, but we want to say that the price is gonna stay the same so we can just clone this entire thing and the way we compute the price is also gonna stay the same so we're gonna clone this thing right and there we go so uh, now what you can do essentially uh, if you have the next day you can just copy this line next day and a different price in here right so uh and you can already do some like basic calculations and whatnot which is which is pretty cool i guess <laughs> right so you can already do this kind of shit. <laughs> what the fuck like it's 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 even as useful i, I can use that shit actually myself <laughs> what the fuck the the cloning the cell cloning actually makes it useful believe it or not because i don't have to copy paste this shit uh like, what the fuck it would be also nice if, if it if it, if it would pretty print this entire thing but i don't know so we, we can have something like total uh but for total right uh for total uh we need to sum up the whole column so summing up the whole column is kind of like not easy but we can try to come up with something uh right so for instance for instance uh, this one is going to simply clone the previous uh, cell. Okay, so as you can see, uh, well, not really clone it. We have to actually say equal A, B, C, D is going to be D1. There we go. So here's D1 and we sort of cloned it. Right. The next one is going to be basically taking uh, A, B. I might as well actually put like A, uh, B, well, shit, this one, yeah, it will fuck it up. Uh, A, B, C, D, E. Um, so, E1, right, so E1, uh, but plus D2, right, plus D2. So, and this is supposed to be sum of this one and this one. Is it true? Is it true? I'm not quite sure. Uh, just a second. Uh, let me go to my scratch pad and I'm gonna just sum up these two things. Uh, it looks like true. It does in fact look like true. Uh -huh. And yeah, yeah, it is in fact true. Okay, and now uh, in here I can simply clone the next one. 
Right, and essentially the last one is always gonna be the total, no matter what you do. Right, so you basically bootstrap it with two cells in here, uh, and then you just keep uh, copying it, and this is always gonna be the total over like a period of time or whatnot. Uh, so then you can have the next uh, day, which is like 20, uh, right, and you only have to specify the amount, and uh, you always have the total that adds to the, to the thing. Uh, so yeah, it's it's a, it's kind of like a recur recursive thing. You kind of do in a recursion, which is pretty cool, I guess. Um, I like that. It's not bad actually, for for an exercise. Uh, it's not bad for an exercise. Mm -hmm. And we have multiplication in here. We have sum in here. So the the cloning makes the sum function kind of redundant you know what i'm talking about like you, you don't really need the sum function in excel uh, sum i think it accepts like a row or a column right out of some some numbers like you can just do that with cloning right you just can encode that yourself i think that's that's more generic more general because that means you can do other things it accepts range Oh, I see. But here you don't just don't need that. You basically do partial sums yourself. And it's not that inconvenient because you just put this cloning thing in here. Uh, oh, I see. I see. I don't know. Maybe uh, there's use cases when this kind of stuff is kind of difficult to use, but... Uh, anyway. It would be also cool if this thing supported different kinds of cells and st like instead of numbers also a date and I could... Uh, add one day to the date or something like that if you know what i'm talking about for instance i could probably take this thing equal uh a one plus um i don't know one day i'm not sure if this is the official syntax uh of uh excel excel but it would be kind of nice and then later we could do something like clone this thing right and we know that we always put like this uh amounts daily Right, and the only thing we have to put in there is the amounts themselves. Um, this way is a bit more compact, but it's legit. Uh, yeah, I guess. Mm -mm. All right, so, but but for now we don't really support that. I'm not sure if I'm gonna support that, but yeah, that's that's really cool. I really like that. So it's, it's already possible to do this kind of shit. Look at that. Uh, <clears throat> so 21, uh, 69, 420. Uh, uh, yeah, there we go. Mm -hmm. Keeps cool. mm -hmm. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, let's actually put the bills into uh, CSV. So we have a bunch of examples in here. So we're gonna just continue using them. Uh, okay, so what do we got? Uh, we introduced the presidents, and I think I can uh, quite confidently just remove this entire thing. There we go. Uh, remove this entire thing. And let me rebuild the entire stuff. Uh, cool. I can even try to run it. We run it on a stress test, so let's try to run it on, uh, I don't know, the bills. Uh, right. So we run it on the bills. There we go. Okay. Uh, ta, 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 ta. Mm -hmm. To implement um, implement uh, binary operator precedence binary operator precedence and let's actually push that. All right. So what's going to be the next thing we need to implement in here? We need to implement parentheses, right? Right now, we do not support parentheses whatsoever, right? For instance, uh, if I go back to the bills in here, uh, right? Uh, if we multiply in this entire thing, maybe I also want to, I don't know, add plus one in here, right? So add plus one and just see what's going to happen. It will say unknown token starts with this thing. And I really like how it precisely tell you where exactly the mistake has happened, right? So we see, so this is a precise reporting of the errors. Pretty, pretty precise. Okay, so uh, Lexa next token. So it's actually not really next token, but it's more like a peak token. 
Uh, so, and we need to add support for the parentheses, right? <laughs> I think I need to do something about this condition, don't you think? Ah, no, I, don't, I think I'm not going to do anything. Well, I can, okay, I can try to put it on the next line. Can I, can I actually do that so it looks better, like this? It will probably never look better. Um, right. uh -huh, so I can at least put it like that. Right. So, and another one uh, is going to be like this, right? Okay. So we have something like this in here. Uh, and now it will tokenize these things appropriately, hopefully. Uh, okay, cell reference must start with a capital letter. Okay, so it actually uh, parsed, uh, tried to parse this thing as um, reference, as the cell reference. So we need to now um, go ahead and go to the primary expression. Okay, so if this entire thing convertible to the um, to the number, it is a number. If it's not convertible to a number, we try to think of it as a cell, which makes sense, I suppose. But here is another thing. Uh, if it is equal, right, uh, else if, else if, uh, as to our, um, let's put it this way, sv equal, token text if it is equal to open parent right um and we actually take took the next one okay we should try to parse this entire thing as the original expression right so that's what we need to try to do we need to try to parse it as the original expression and uh where is the parse expression right so that's basically what we need to do here so parsing it like that um ooh. This one is interesting, so mm, so it means we'll have to move this kind of stuff sort of like inside, if you know what I'm talking about. Right, so this is going to be like this. And here we just return this thing. Uh, okay, so um, expression index, right, so this is going to be the Alexa, this is going to be the temporary string, this is going to be the buffer, and then I need to grab the next token, so this is going to be uh, Alexa uh, next, le token, uh, Alexa, and if token uh, text is not equal to SV close, right, uh, we have to report an error, okay, uh, std error, and where can we even report that error? By the way, if we reached the end of the um, of the Lexa, do we even report an error in there? So Lexa uh, pick token, right? So for instance, uh, yeah, we do report. So there is a location here. So that's actually pretty convenient. Uh, okay, so Lexa, maybe not. Uh, let's put it this way. S Z U uh, Z U and now we can do the following thing. Expected uh, token close, but got uh, something like this is going to be S V F M T. Um, right, so it's going to be new line uh, S V arc. We've got the token text. Then then we're going to actually get it with one, but we also need to provide the token file path, the token. Uh, file row and the token file column because we need to precisely tell where exactly this kind of shit has happened. Right. Um, and only after that we can return the expert index in here. There we go. Uh, so now uh, I suppose we'll need to do a similar thing. Right. We'll have to copy paste this stuff in here and then uh, return this thing in here. Cool. Uh, looks good to me, looks good to me. Mm -hmm. So now we support um, parentheses, I think. Uh, we have to go through the compilation errors and whatnot. Uh, and declared expression. Okay, so this one is rather interesting. Um, oh shit, fuck, shit, fuck. 
Damn. All right, so maybe I have to do something like number. Right, and uh, I'm gonna put it like that, and then expression. Uh, right, so what was that? Expression as number. Yeah, yeah so we have to do expression as uh, number is gonna be original number. I might as well put this into a thing in here. Okay, so yeah. Try to parse it as a number. If it is parsable as a number, this becomes a number. If it starts with parentheses, this means it's a prime expression wrapped in parentheses. If it's something else, we're gonna try to parse it as the cell, right? So cell is basically the default thing that we can try to parse it if we don't recognize it as anything else. Um, all right, so let me try to compile this entire thing. So parse expression, and this thing is implicitly declared, which means that I probably have to forward declared it here somewhere because we have like um, mutual recursion between functions right so mutual recursion all right so and also semicolon and uh, here we reach the end of the execution which is absolutely dumb we really don't uh, we actually do because I need to return export index in here there we go so uh, all right expected token but code <laughs> very cool thank you so much <laughs> Uh, if it's not equal, okay, so <laughs> that was very useful, uh, thank you so much, okay, uh, cool, so it, it managed to parse everything, so if I uh, actually, for instance, like put this thing in here, will it do something? Uh, yeah, I expected this, but got, it's not a bad error message, look at that, so it's not a bad error message, if you know what I'm talking about. I think it's fine. Yeah. Yeah, this is fine. We can try to do something like plus plus, right? So I think it will try to complain. So I must uh, access capital letter. Uh, it tried to parse it as... I see, I see what you mean here. Uh, uh -huh. So, but if you try to do things like that, it seems to be uh, fine. So it should add plus one in here. So if I remove plus one, uh, it actually, yeah, it actually reduces it by one. All right. Uh, so it's supposed to be like this originally. Okay. We can try to see how parentheses actually affect the parsing uh, and precedence and stuff like that. Uh, right. So if I switch to here, here is the original thingy. Uh, right, so this is 2 multiplied by 3 plus 1, right, and if I move that thing around uh, like this, uh, it moves around uh, perfectly. But then, let's say I want to parse it like this and I explicitly tell that with the parentheses. Will it uh, do that? It does, in fact. You see plus got grouped uh, correctly in here. So now, if I'm not happy with the default precedence of plus and multiplication, I can always put that inside of the parentheses and there we go. So, yeah, we just implemented the parentheses. Cool. It's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. So we have parentheses. Um, so this one's going to be two. And let's go back to the original Beals example. And yep, 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 yep. Yep, 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 yep. Mm -hmm. mm, all right. Implement a parenthesis for the expressions, right? Implement parenthesis for the expressions. So the next thing is going to be uh, urinal minus, right? So we need to implement some sort of a urinal minus. Mm -hmm. Let me see, let me see. So urinal minus is essentially a primary expression, right? So if you try to parse a primary expression, parse uh, primary and it starts with a minus that means you have the unary minus right so you have a unary minus uh, and that means that you have to parse the next thing as a primary expression right and then negate it if i understand correctly mm, do you even have to maybe we even have to have a special ast node for that i think for the uh, unary operators, we need to have a special node. Yesu, 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 kawaii freaking desu. 
but I do not plan to add more unary operators except minus at least right now uh, so maybe it doesn't make any sense to introduce like a similar system to bop right so is, remember how with bop like we have expression we have bop kind right and we have different kinds of these things and then um we have the uh expression bop itself which contains the kind and left hand side and right hand side maybe it doesn't make sense to do this kind of thing uh, but I don't know, maybe it, if we introduce this kind of thing, it will make it more maintainable, if you know what I'm talking about. So the thing I want to do is essentially, yeah, let's actually introduce it, why not? It's not that uh, difficult to do anyway. So uh, maybe we're going to have a thing that is called um, that abstract uh, expression unary operator, yop. <laughs> Gonna be called yup, yup, unary operator. So Bob is a binary operator, and yup is a unary operator. So and we're gonna have a, a yup kind, uh, right? And the expression index, um, and this one is gonna be param. It's called param. Mm, all right. So type def enumeration uh, yup kind, uh, and this one is gonna be yup. Uh, Yup, kind, uh, kind uh, minus. All right. So for now, we're gonna have only one. Uh, so this is the kind. This is the parameter. And uh, now we can have. Uh, right. So this is gonna be up expression. Yup. And uh, yup. Unary operator and binary operator. Uh, so let me see. So maybe we also need to introduce a different kind of the expression self. So you see we have expression kind number, expression kind cell, and now we have expression kind bop and yop. Bop and yop. Uh, bop and yop. Uh, nice one. Nice one. Bob from Hearthstone. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and just go through the compilation errors and see what we have. Uh, so when we're dumping everything, uh, I guess we're gonna do uh, the one thing: expert kind. Yup. Uh, yep. Yup. Cock. Yup. Cock. Mm, and so what we're gonna do in here I suppose we do need to switch on different yup kinds uh, yup expression as uh, yup kind and case uh, yup kind minus is essentially f print f uh, yup minus mm. eh. It's gonna be break and the default is gonna be assert uh, unreachable uh -huh. and exit uh, let's exit with one there we go so we'll get that and then we can try to dump that single expression right we can try to dump that symbol a single expression yup param there we go expression as yup and we take the parameter of this thing uh cool i think that's it and as we add more uh unary prayers if somebody will ever add uh so it will be relatively easy i think so now we go into the evaluation of this entire stuff right so we need to add uh additional evaluation here so expression kind yup um right so we have to have something like double uh, param, we ta do table eval expression, provide the table, the uh, expression buffer, then we take the expression, interpret it as yup, and evaluate that parameter first, right? So we evaluate that parameter first, and then uh, we need to switch uh, upon the kind of yup, uh, right, so it can be kind of yup, case uh, yup kind minus. And we're going to just return minus param. There we go. So that's how we're going to be interpreting this entire thing. Uh, the default one is going to be assert 
uh, zero unreachable, right? Reach the unreachable and then exit one and there we go. Hopefully that's uh, going to work. Uh, now, if I try to compile, everything's okay. Oh, cloning. Freaking cloning is going to be also pain in the ass. Um, yeah. So, but it shouldn't be that much of a pain in the ass. Um, so I suppose we can extract yop from the root thingy, right? So we can extract uh, this thing from the root thingy. Uh, it's kind of similar to the cell, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's supposed to be the, the root itself. Okay, so that makes sense. It's supposed to be the root itself. All right, so let's actually put on that. Mm hmm. Can or will this be able to do powers, for instance? Uh, to be fair, like, I really recommend you to watch the entire series from the beginning. And uh, there is a playlist in the YouTube channel where I upload it. This is an exercise. <laughs> and the scope of this project is already very big. I don't think I'm going to add anything more to here. If you want to have that, you can add it yourself. This is not supposed to be a real application. This is supposed to be an exercise that I want you to do uh, for quite some time. Um, so <laughs> and adding a new operator is actually straightforward. If you have a system that like, has a list of the operators, right? So here is the numeration, right? To add a new operator, you just add a new enumeration in here, right? Power, follow the compilation errors, and you have a new enumerator. So like, adding a new operator is not that difficult. So it's already kind of solved. It's not, there's nothing interesting in here. You can do it yourself. <laughs> so. Probably not. My answer is probably not because it's like eh. the most interesting part is actually putting this place, uh, this system in place where you can just add more and more operators. You see what I'm talking about? And that system is already in place, almost, almost in place. We only need to add uh, unary operators. Okay. Um, it's, um, so let me continue. Mm. Uh, Okay, so we need to do the cloning. Um, is it going to compile? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Case expression kind EOP. If we're trying to cl uh, clone uh, unary operator, right, we're trying to clone unary operator, we'll have to extract it first, right? So we're going to do that in a like, sort of transactional manner. Uh, right, so we're going to take the root expression. Um, right, root expression, uh, expression buffer at uh, root, and I'm just extracting this entire thing. Uh -huh. Root expression as you. All right, and then um, I probably need to do something like this. Uh, the next thing I need to do, I need to take its parameter and essentially move it in a particular direction, right? So it's going to be EOP param. Okay, it has been moved in a particular direction. And now I need to allocate a new expression into which I'm going to clone all of that. Uh, right, and then here, um, I'll need to grab this pointer, the absolute pointer. So the kind of this thing is going to be yop, uh, and this is going to be yop as well. All right, so you can see here, we just grab the absolute pointer, just do whatever we want and we forget about it. Because after any of these calls, or like this call or uh, this call, these pointers can instantly get invalidated. So you have to be super careful. Uh, right. Uh, all right, so control reaches because I probably forgot to return the new index in here. Uh -huh. Okay, so we have something at least. Uh, I think we have something. So how can we even uh, test that it works? We can probably put something in the bill in here. I can uh, put parentheses in here and just put minus. Uh, is it going to work? Uh, Self-reference must start with a capital letter. Okay, thank you very much. I don't know why it didn't work. Um, mm, okay, let's take a look at the uh, primary parsing. 
Uh, parse primary expression. Okay, so uh, what do we have in here? You try to parse this as that. Um, oh, I see. I never even tried to parse it, so yeah, I, I need to actually uh, put something in place in here. So else if sv token text uh, sv minus, right? So it means we need to allocate a new thing. Um, well, yeah, we need to parse an expression to see b. Right, and then we have to construct a completely new expression, right? Um, a completely new expression. So I suppose the thing we have to do, we have to do param index. So this is only a param index, but we'll also need to allocate uh, expression index. Uh, so it's going to be expression buffer alloc. So it's going to be eb. Uh, and in here we're going to do a transaction, uh, expression buffer at, it be expression index, right, and in here is going to be kind, expression kind unary operator, so this is the unary operator, and expression as UOP, kind of that thing is going to be uh, UOP kind minus, I know that for a fact, and finally uh, the parameter is going to be the parameter in here there we go uh, yeah so and it is super dangerous actually i think to um inline this thing if you try to inline this thing it can uh, allocate uh new expressions and effectively invalidate this pointer that's why we call this function before even trying to get the pointer to the original thingy right uh and uh once we've got everything uh we we can assign it so you know so sort of like transactional thingy it's kind of difficult to explain but yeah uh it kind of solves the problems that we had in previous streams with this kind of stuff uh maybe here i can also copy paste this entire stuff right should be pretty easy uh yeah there we go so i initialized everything and i instantly forget uh this pointer and then i just return expression index there we go yeah, again, it would be super nice if the language would sort of encourage and help uh, with these kind of things. That would be kind of cool. Mm, but it is what it is. It isn't what it isn't. All right, so all of these things became negative. You see, we just put a negative in one of those things and all of that is negative now. And since we have the cloning, right, so we clone everything in here, right, so it sort of got propagated there. Uh, but we can actually remove that and it's not negative anymore. There we go. So if I put negative in here, uh, it got propagated only for this specific row. Uh, okay, so we have a support for unary minus. Um, for unary minus, and if you add, if you need more uh, unary operators, you can always just add them. Uh, UAP kind, right? So you can add something else in here, maybe uh, tilde for like bit negation, right? Inverting bits or something. There's not that many unary operators in like generally in computing. So the famous one is the minus. The uh, second one is the uh, tilde negation, like uh, inverting of the bits. And that is it. So I cannot think about any other that people use. It's, it's usually only minus, right? So <laughs> yeah. There's not that many of them. Can, can anyone remember any like other unary operators generally in computing? Uh, generally, maybe maybe not generally, maybe specifically. Maybe, maybe there is a language where uh, there is pretty interesting unary operators. I guess taking a pointer, but it's not really that general. Um, I don't know. Or the reference in a pointer. Hold on. Plus plus. Mm, well, yeah, but this one is side effectish, I suppose. Mm, for some reason, in my head, I was thinking about like uh, pure operators that don't mutate any state. This one is like mutating states, so I wasn't, wasn't sure. Uh, mm -mm. All right, so unary minus. Uh, do we really need function calls though? We really need function calls. I'm not sure about function calls, to be fair. Uh, what kind of functions Excel has? 
So one of them is some, but to implement some, I also need a, a lot of other uh, other things. Um, so nice. What the hell are those screenshots for ants? What the fuck is wrong with you, Microsoft? Seriously, what the fuck? How am I supposed to use that? Jesus. Uh, okay. Even if I open it. Well, I mean, it's kind of fine in here, but what the fuck is this shit? <laughs> so bad. Uh, Mega Lul. Literal screenshots for ants. Um, anyway, so you provide the sum uh, and you provide the range. We can provide the range, I suppose. Uh, but in our case, mm, we could implement like some a1 like a5 right this would be easier in turn screenshots yeah um eh, i don't know i don't feel like implementing the function calls so i guess i guess that's gonna be it maybe uh so this is a main two uh i'm gonna remake this one so this is gonna be on one main and we actually reached thousand lines of code would you look at that so you know thing that can you can use for keeping track of your expenses uh takes thousand lines of code right so and it's free unlike microsoft excel uh, microsoft office excel right so to be fair a thousand lines of code for this kind of thing is not that big i can probably get it even smaller uh because there's a lot of like redundancy um, that I had to introduce and also there's all the redundancy from SV library because I don't use everything from this library so you can probably remove even even more of some stuff in here I'm pretty sure uh, but the total size without any dependencies so we depend only uh, speaking of external dependencies we depend only uh, on libc right so libc is the only dependency in here and the total size is uh, well, this one is rather interesting. Wait a second. I can't can't believe that this the main itself is a thousand, and this one is it should be at least. No, I can't believe that. What the fuck are you talking about? More like it. Um... Ah. It. The code. It removes empty lines for oh, okay and probably comments as well let me see yeah and we also have two thousands in here but this is for for the build system so another thousand goes to the build system <laughs> right. uh okay so not bad i guess not bad not bad at all uh i'm actually kind of proud i wonder if i did well I uh, wonder if I did well, if this is supposed to be like an exercise that, uh, you know, employers can use for for hiring. How much chat would you give me? Uh, you know, how many out of 10, how many points out of 10 would you give me for this, for this solution? Um, it can do this kind of shit. I think it's pretty cool. Blow build system, yeah. <laughs> 69 out of 10 um cool <laughs> thank you so much classic uh classic 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 okay uh so let's do mm -hmm. to implement uh urinary operators right implement uh, urinal operators make it a real app uh, what's the criteria of a real app by the way how do you know that it's a real app or unreal app or something uh, i don't know what's the criteria mm. <laughs> okay go. so let's make a pull request um Two, 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 two. Uh, okay. All arithmetic um, arithmetic uh, operations operations uh, with 
precedence and parenthesis and this one is going to close the second issue um paug isn't that paug i think it's pretty paug another thing i forgot to do actually um so if i try to run this thing seems to be okay can we now wall grind this thing uh-huh no leaks no errors what about the clang uh, what about the clang thingy? Uh, okay, cool. Uh, on top of that, we can also uh, stress copy. I think we need to actually test everything on CI with a stress copy. Uh, okay, so and in GCC. Uh, right, cool. That's pretty pogue, not gonna lie. Mm -hmm. Run stress copy since we on CI. I'm gonna push that part of the repo. <laughs> And push that right into the repo. Enterprise mm. Quality Software. Mm -hmm. So I also run Valgrind on CI2. Uh, look. Uh, right. And I set it so. Uh, no build. That it exits with a non zero exit code if it detects any errors. So if you have invalid reads and writes, on CI, that fails the CI. So, it's pretty cool. Uh, but it only works on Linux because Valgrind works only on Linux. Um, I try to set it up on Mac OS and it complains that it needs Linux to actually work properly. Uh, we can even take a look at how it looks like. Mm -mm -mm. So, build everything and... Uh, yeah, here's the Valgrind logs and uh, on CI. I uh, have to scroll a lot of, yeah, as you can see, there's uh, zero bytes, no leaks are possible, and probably no errors, yeah, zero errors from zero contacts. Okay, let's do an official merge, how about that, how about that, and let's delete the branch, and I think, hopefully, I'm finally done with this project, right, so it's more or less in a state that I'm more or less happy with it right so it supports the features that i wanted it to support um and yeah i'm proud of it actually i'm proud of this exercise not gonna lie not gonna lie so this is for real the last episode of uh of mini excel and c so uh after today's trip we're not gonna develop this thing anymore so this is the last one Right, because like there's literally nothing else to do, so I'm I'm fine with the with the current state. You can always like implement more and more different features, but I don't think it, it makes uh, more sense. Season finale, yeah, it is a season finale. Mm -hmm. All right, so I guess that's it for today. Thanks everyone who's watching me right now. Really appreciate it. Uh, have a good one, and I see you all next time. I don't know when, I don't know where. But uh, we'll see, we'll see. We're going to continue working on other projects. Uh, maybe we're going to continue working on our text editor. Um, people seem to like that project. So, yeah. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Uh, see you all next time. Love you. Mwah.